Namaskar, I'm Neil, and I welcome all of you to UPSC Annual. We're going to resume our current affairs, you know, newspaper analysis series. Today, we're going to look at the newspaper from 19th of January. We're going to look at both Indian Express and the Hindu. If you want to look at the first video which spoke about how to analyze, uh, go check the top right section. I put the link of the first video. For people who are joining for the first time, this is an about me section of sorts. This is my name, how long I have been in the cycle, what I have done prior to coming in the cycle. This is my attempt history. And uh, I have gotten the interview call this year for CSE, IFOS, as well as SCS. So let's begin with the analysis for Indian Express, today's Indian Express. And uh, so today, the newspaper did have a lot of information uh, as far as the preparation for CSE is concerned. So you can very easily cover both the Hindu and Indian Express uh, within 45 minutes. And we're going to see how. So page number two has classifieds and tenders, nothing important. Then we come to page, uh, first page, again, nothing worth uh, putting your time into as far as the preparation of the exam is concerned. Then, of course, on the first page, uh, we, they speak about the ASA report, but most of the things have already been covered in the previous editions. The issue of how learning has taken a hit during COVID has been an issue which has been in the news for the past two years or so. For people who have just entered the preparation, maybe they'd get a couple of new keywords uh, while reading this news. News uh, issues like, you know, the fact that, uh, you know, the key takeaways tell you uh, the uh, three takeaways that can directly be used in, in paper. But otherwise, for students who have been reading the newspaper since even, you know, a year or so, there's, there's nothing new in this section. Then we move forward to the next section. Again, uh, nothing exam worthy here. Uh, this is the Delhi edition today. I speak about the fact that Delhi is really under the a cold wave. We move forward, move forward. Again, nothing important uh, from the examination perspective. Could be entirely skipped. We come to the editorial section. Uh, again, so this there's this editorial from the director of the Asar Center. And... Uh, I found this keyword, uh, which can be directly used in the exam. Whenever we're speaking about the learning issues, there's this beautiful keyword, FLN. This is that, you know, foundational literacy and numeracy. So when you say that, you know, the reading abilities of students are taking a hit, uh, compared to that, when you say that the foundational literacy and numeracy has taken a hit, it brings a little uh, more gravitas to your argument. Similarly, there's another scheme run by Government of India, Nipun Bharat Mission, which deals with the proficiency in reading and understanding numeracy. So I found only these two pointers which can be used as far as, you know, the topic of education is concerned. You can use this in a number of ways, even in an essay talking about education. Uh, or if there's a question on the impact of COVID, you can say that foundational literacy and numeracy take, has taken a hit, but Nipun Bharat Mission aims to undo those, uh, you know, issues that uh, have been seen of late. Then again, nothing important. Uh, so this, uh, this discussion is with respect to, you know, the draft rules for foreign universities. And so you realize this framework which can be used um, in a question on education. So education needs to have three parameters. Education needs to have access. Uh, education needs to have equity and education needs to have requisite quality. So there's this three frameworks in terms of which you can think of whenever you speak about education. So AEQ uh, is the mnemonic that I made. So foreign universities, the entry of foreign universities should ensure that uh, not only does it uh, focus on improving the quality, but it should also ensure equal access. That is the point the author is trying to make, the, the writer is trying to make. So the, Proposals for quality improvement, uh, creating unity. So there are these three uh, new, you know, proposals that are being made. Uh, and then this one issue that is being seen in terms of the first proposal, then this way out. Then again, you can see here how, uh, you know, another issue that comes into play. And finally, you know, this is the way forward. Impact on access, the best alternatives to have institution to institution collaboration. So the writer says instead of 
allowing foreign universities we should focus on collaboration between our universities and theirs and i think that is a read this article these are the important pointers which can be used uh, this is a framework that uh, you can use in a question on education access equity and quality then moving forward again this uh, the ambassador of the uae to india has written this article uh, the only important piece of information as far as the uh, preparation for upsc csc is concerned is given in this paragraph it says that you know cop 28 will include the first global stock take and audit that will demonstrate the gaps between stated climate ambition and reality the rest the writer has spoken about uae's efforts but we are not we are not preparing for uae civil services so that is not relevant as far as uh, the uh, preparation for csc is concerned then we move forward come to the explained section again i find two keywords so as far as the issue of uh, the literacy or you know the gap in education is concerned due to covid there is one road ahead which is suggested by the writer uh, wherein the writer says an integration between anganwadi system and the school system uh, is urgently needed so this will be my way forward whenever i speak about the learning deficit that has come into play due to covid then green clearance violations i think uh, i realized that i don't make a note of this but i just read i realized that ngt can take suomoto cognizance that is all i learned from this article so there's a option in prelim which says that you know ngt can take suomoto cognizance that is correct uh, so i think that way you know you can brush up your concepts for prelims also by reading newspaper then the world section has nothing new economy section also nothing exam worthy and i think that is it so it took me around you know 15 minutes to go through today's newspaper nothing not you know not a lot of information which was exam worthy you can read as much as you want but you won't gain much as far as the uh, preparation is concerned then you come to let's come to the hindu so the hindu had two or three good snippets of information let's come to the first page had nothing important page number 2 again so the, we saw this issue perennially coming in since some time the lg cm tussle in delhi and uh, so there is new issue which has come up which is that the mha the union ministry of home affairs has empowered the lg to frame the rules governing the functioning of factories and industries in the capital so this is another board of contention now add this to your uh, notes speaking about the lg versus cm tussle then uh, this is currently being examined by the supreme court over the control of administrative services also in the capital the last time the judgment came it did not deal with the issue of the administrative control or the control over the administrative services so right now there are two open bones of contention this and this which is you know fairly recent then move forward to the next piece of news which is important nothing exam worthy so yesterday we saw this uh, you know bird being seen after 94 years in i think mizoram here they speak about how spot bellied eagle owl is spotted in seshachalam forest i don't make a note of this information i just see that something which is named spot bellied uh, is a bird spot bellied maybe something else bellied or spot dash uh, so similar sounding uh, names can belong to a bird that is my learning from you know reading this news then we say that government should work towards systemic reform so this they again is speaking about collegium and issue we saw in yesterday's uh, indian express newspaper i just pick this keyword systemic reform so i'm going to use it very liberally in all my gs papers whenever we have to look for reforms whenever there's an issue we don't have to look for ad hoc solutions we have to look at systemic reform which are aimed at targeting the root cause of the problem uh nothing exam worthy in my opinion then speak about china i see two beautiful keywords the first is threat postponement not only can can it be used only in terms of china but in terms of in number of problems so whenever we are postponing resolving the solution or when we just setting over the problem it is called a strategy of threat postponement and it is based on a misplaced optimism so that is a good keyword can be used in n number of ways again uh, potential strategies calibrated escalation so in india china uh, the issue between india and china i can use this keyword of calibrated escalation instead of going full throttle to a 
to a war like situation you can escalate it in a calibrated manner so that your grievance is also taken care of but you're not escalating it to a, a war like situation then i move forward this, this beautiful article i really liked it i will also have forest services interview lined up so this is also relevant as far as you know forest services uh, exam or interview is concerned so they speak about esg eco sensitive zone in the gist they speak about what are esgs can be used for prelims again i never make notes for prelims just understand develop a conceptual clarity of what are esgs so they are uh, intended to safeguard protected areas by transitioning so they are zones of transition then it is a the whole point of having an esg uh, is is you know having this fortress conservation model another beautiful keyword i'm going to use it liberally the fortress conservation model and fra recognizes customary and traditional rights both again another piece of information about fra relevant to gs3 uh, conservation and environment then issue is that you know there's an overlapping jurisdiction uh, between gram sabha's jurisdiction under fra and extent of esgs that is the over problem of overlapping jurisdiction then let's see what else is there so i have a good data point they speak about protected areas at large and they say that you know over 5.26% of india's land area has 108 national parks 564 wildlife sanctuaries and they are notified under wpa so another good piece of information can be asked in prelims uh, then they say that you know a statement like this can come wherein they say that national parks are declared under epa environment protection act which is wrong because national parks are notified under wpa then again uh, they do away with even those activities permitted in the reserve forest where the rights uh this and this unless specifically allowed so it's not as if the rights are completely extinguished they are extinguished only to the extent unless specifically allowed by default they are not allowed and they can be allowed by making a separate notification that is again another piece of uh information then you come to this part they say that lawmakers are trying to undo so the whole point of having fra is to undo a historic injustice this was the target so this is the appraisal the evaluation of fra the target was you know handing over at least 4 lakh square kilometers that is more than half of india's notified forest but only 16% of that has been transferred until now so we had to transfer 50% we have only been able to accomplish 16% that is the shortfall in our expectation and what has happened on the ground then uh, what is the task task is to conserve protect and manage forest cpm we have to conserve protect and manage forests not only forest forest wildlife and biodiversity forest wildlife and biodiversity within the traditional village boundaries cool so what are esgs there are total 341 esgs 29 states uh the problem with esgs is that sometimes they fall within the schedule areas notified under fifth schedule and for example said so then after writing this argument so sometimes esgs overlap with schedule areas for example right just two or three states out of these for example in jharkhand mp this will add gravitas to your argument and then you say that in scheduled areas under article 244 you know pisa p panchayat extension to scheduled areas is applied then you can speak about how you know esgs are notified under epa that is another piece of information as far as uh, prelims are concerned they sometimes ask about you know these being notified under certain acts so if it says that esgs are notified under wpa it is wrong they are notified under epa then you come to this part wherein they say that you know another issue was that uh, you know consent was precondition for considering proposals to divert until so ministry of external uh, ministry of environment forest and climate change recently did away with the need to take grams bas consent for diverting uh, you know forest land for north so this is another recent environmental issue of it so this is uh, you know a gold mine of uh, snippets of information that can be used in gs3 and also in prelims then this is the life cycle of how you know esgs come into play so based on life cycle framework you can memorize how esgs are notified so first you know uh, they nominate or they make a committee which determines the extent of each esg number 1 so this is step number 1 determining the extent then they list the activities to be restricted or you know to be permitted with certain safeguards step number 2 then state government sends the notification to 
Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, step number three. The basic life cycle. Committee will be constituted to determine the extent. Then the list of activities will be decided that are regulated, restricted, or permitted with certain safeguards. Number three, state government will send a notification to Ministry of uh, Environment, Forest and Climate Change. And then finally, uh, within two years, the state government is required to draft a zonal master plan. Step number four. Issue is very simple. You know, uh, no information on the public on zonal master plan since 2012. So number four has not been realized on the ground. This is one issue. Again, they had to set up a monitoring committee that also has not been set up until now. That is another issue. Then uh, another framework, you know, what are they doing? Panchayat Raj institutions are interested with soil conservation, water management, social forestry. So what are the tasks under FRA or CFR? So tasks are fairly simple for land. So this is stakeholder uh, based framework. For land, what you have to do, soil conservation. For water, what you have to do, water management. For land, you have what do you have to do? Social forestry. Right. So you can memorize these. Then they say that another problem is that ideally when ESU will design, it was thought to, you know, that it would eventually lead to site-specific plan. But what has happened at this point in time is that it has only become a one size fits all notification of sorts. That is another issue. I think that is it. So you can see you find a lot of information on number one, what are the issues with ESEs, overlapping jurisdiction with FRA, overlapping jurisdiction with scheduled areas. Then this was the target of uh, FRA. Then this is what we've been able to accomplish until now. We have to conserve, protect, and manage. Uh, then life cycle of ESEs, how ESE was supposed to be realized, what are the issues. Four and five have not been realized. Site-specific plans were envisaged, but we've only uh, had a one-size-fits-all policy of sorts. And I think that is it. Uh, or do we have anything left? Let us just check. Um, no, that is it. That is why I said in within 45 minutes, you can finish both Indian Express and Hindu for 19th of January because other, other news are not relevant as far as CSE um, is concerned. I think that is it. Uh, if you want to see more of my work, check out the description box, look at the Telegram link, comment if you have any follow-up queries, and I shall see you in the next video. Take care.